Thank you for downloading this podcast from Emmanuel Church Lurgan. At Emmanuel, our vision is to help rewrite the story of Craigavon, Ireland and the nations with the good news of the Kingdom of God. We hope you enjoy listening to this message. We are continuing on our theme around listen and um, this is the 10th Sunday we've been on this theme, Dave and I, and uh, we, we started this whole idea actually out of the importance of actually listening to what the Spirit is saying to the churches at the moment. And um, if ever there was a time to listen and be still and hear what God's saying, it is now. And we actually said away back 10 weeks ago that all the seasoned prophets and people that we actually really know and trust don't seem to be hearing an awful lot about what God is doing at the moment. It seems that, um, uh, that, that there's been loads of um, silly things that have been said, but people that are really seasoned in the prophetic field um, aren't really hearing um, much at the moment, and that's, that seems really, really interesting. And so if ever there's a time to attune our ears, we think and believe this is the time. And we base this all out of the, um, the verse, uh, let him hear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And so this idea of, of understanding what the Spirit is saying to the church, and of course, we suggested that um, that, that, that is said to the seven churches. It's, it's repeated over and over and over again, seven times to the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And um, four other times in the New Testament, you read the little phrase without the second bit, but they that have ears to hear, let them hear. Four other times in the New Testament, um, you read that little phrase. So it's very important. Listening is very important. And um, we all uh, need to listen more And it's important that we are present. And it's important even with people, isn't it? We all know people that um, when we're speaking to them aren't really listening. They're reloading. They're reloading for what they're going to say when they get a chance to speak again. And so it's really important to listen, setting aside a time to listen to the whispers of the Spirit in this day and age is so important. And on this second Sunday of Advent, uh, I want us to listen to this all too familiar story because it has become very familiar to us. And what I want to do is I want to, to listen as we talk through it today and listen to some life lessons. I have six today, six life lessons that I think we can hear out of the story of Mary and Joseph. So we're going to read Matthew 1. We're going to read in Matthew 1, 18 to 25. And um, if you can follow along, that will be really, really good. We're going to Matthew 1, uh, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful um, to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Pretty ingenious guy, this. Um, We sell him short. We don't talk about him enough, I think. Um, But he's a man of uh, integrity, and he's a man who um, God chose to be the earthly father of the Messiah. We do the same with Mary. We... um, um, in, in wrong theology, I suppose, we have played down and threw the baby out with the bathwater, and she was certainly one that was favored of the Lord. All right, so um, after he had considered this, an angel, verse 20, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus woke up, and he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Notice that he gave him the name 
Jesus. Um, so the Lord always honors and blesses his word. So let's pray a little moment. Father, thank you for this incredible story. Thank you for this story that changed history, changed life, changed eternity, changed everything. Would you bless this story to us as we replay it today in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> we have tremendously high expectations at Christmas, hasn't we? Haven't we? We, we, we? we so want everything to be perfect. We have pictures in our minds of children playing, choir singing, um, carol singing, families together, people smiling and getting along, eating nice food. Um, and often that's not the way. And one wonders what it's going to be like this year. It's supposed to be, as the song says, the most wonderful time of the year or the happiest season of all. But for many, it will be a difficult time this year because their joy has been interrupted uh, in 2020. For some, it may be the loss of a job. For some, it may be the death of a loved one. It may be a divorce or a loneliness or etc., etc. The world's your oyster with that. You, there are so many reasons this year why 2020 has stolen and interrupted the joy of many people. And obviously, COVID-19 has rocked all of our worlds in some way or another, and tragically so for some. And so we look to the Christmas season as a time of perfect peace and harmony and joy. But let's remember that the first Christmas was far from that. The first Christmas was not like that at all. As a matter of fact, the first Christmas was an interruption. And uh, last week we looked at the interruption in the life of an old priest called Zechariah. And we looked how he got a, he received a pretty daunting interruption in the form of an angel when he was in doing his duties in the temple. And so life lesson number one this morning that we need to come to is that interruptions come in life. If you've lived any length of time, you will know that, that interruptions come in life. Interruptions can happen at any time. Consider Zechariah and Elizabeth's interruption. They're old, they're past childbearing age, and yet the message the angel brought to them was that they, they would have a son in their old age. With Joseph and Mary's interruption, well, it came along when they were engaged to be married. Imagine getting engaged at Christmas. Well, they, they were sort of making Christmas, so it didn't really make any difference. But an engagement is supposed to be a wonderful time. It's very special. And we see loads of photos of all the romantic ways to do it. And the man dropping to one knee and asking the, the lady to marry them. And I'm not dead sure how Joseph might have done that. But it was during this time, their engagement, that an angel appeared to Mary and told her that she would uh, miraculously, as a virgin, conceive and give birth to a baby who just actually happened to be the Messiah, the Son of God. What joyful news. And yet what an interruption. Like, how would she explain her pregnancy to Joseph? What would her family say? What would the village and the town that she lived in say? Would they believe her? Would he believe her? Would he be willing to take on that responsibility? This was not in their plans. This was an interruption. And yet she accepted it. Her words ring out as powerful today as they did 2,000 years ago. I love how the NLT puts it. It says, I am the Lord's servant. This is the words of Mary. May everything you have said about me come true. Isn't that lovely? May everything you have said about me come true. Now, we know that Joseph responded. We know how he did. He didn't believe her. Uh, how, how could he? <laughs> Would you have believed her? Um, to the man I'm speaking today, would you have believed your fiancé if she told you that she was pregnant and it just happened to be the Holy Spirit who um, had given her this baby? Um, how, how, how was he going to work through that? His plans for a happy home with the woman he loved were dashed before his eyes. His life and hers as well have been powerfully interrupted. Now for a careful if we're not careful, I should say, we, our response to an interruption can send us down a wrong path. 
Joseph nearly went down that wrong path, but when he discovered Mary's pregnancy, of course he was devastated. You've got to understand this. He's devastated about this. He couldn't buy her story about um, a virgin conception. How could he? Um, As much as he loved her and wanted to be with her, there was nothing to do but divorce her. Now, a betrothal, an ancient um, engagement, an ancient engagement in Jewish times was much more of a binding together than today's engagements that maybe could be more easily broke off. But this was a betrothal, and so it was as strong as a marriage. And um, the only way out of one was divorce. And in fact, Joseph um, had the right, actually, to have Mary stoned to death for her infidelity because, and because he was a good man, And he loved her. He didn't want to embarrass her. He didn't want to hurt her. And so he would just divorce her privately. Now we can see why God would choose such a man of honor um, to be the earthly father of his son. Can't we? Now, this was Joseph's human response to a powerful interruption. And and, and what a mistake it would have been if he'd have went down that route. And often, an interruption can bring a a knee-jerk um, reaction, and we make decisions that if we were better informed and maybe a little less vulnerable, we wouldn't make. And we must be careful that when we face an interruption, we, we just don't react according to our own feelings and fears. All right? So bringing us to lesson, life lesson number two. Life lesson number two, be careful how you handle life's interruptions. The key to handling an interruption is to get God's tech on it. Thankfully, God rescued Joseph from this error. We know the story. I can imagine Joseph having learned about Mary's situation. You can imagine it, can't you? He's tossing and turning in his bed, wondering what's happening, what end of him um, um, is up. Um, and, and finally, he decides that he will divorce her privately um, but while he's sleeping, we read this in 21 or 20 and 21 of Matthew chapter 1. The angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream. It must have been very powerful and said to him, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife and told him that um, what was conceived in her was of the Holy Spirit and he was to be um, named Jesus because he would save people from their sins. So you kind of love this man who, again, I say so often we take for granted, but We are told Joseph awoke with a changed mind and he would not divorce Mary. He would take her as his wife and he would would, um, bear the brunt of the snide remarks with Mary. He would would take the the cast-off remarks that would be made. He would help raise this miraculous child. He had gotten God's perspective on his interruption, you see. And when you encounter an interruption, whatever it may be, don't react according, as I said, to your own feelings and thoughts. Seek God's direction. And so the idea of this is life lesson number three is when interruptions come, look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. When life interruptions come, whatever they, whatever shape or form they take, look to the Lord. One of my dad's favorite verses when my dad died and we were sorting out after mum died, and we were sorting out the, the house. We came in dad's Bible, and um, dad's Bible was, he, he, my dad was a simple man. He was a, not an orator or a public speaker. He was a shy man, but he loved the Psalms and Proverbs. And his Bible through Psalms and Proverbs were just wrinkled and, and stained and um, this passage, Proverbs 3, 5 to 10, was his favorite passage. And um, it says this, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Now listen to this. This will bring health to your body. Isn't that interesting? Health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Makes you stronger physically when you trust the Lord, all right? Um, this will bring health to your body, nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, talking about your money now, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. That's a pretty, pretty powerful promise. Actually, if you 
I, I jump to the next slide, you'll see seven little sections underlined in that. And those seven sections are active verbs. They're little active things. That, that, so you trust in the Lord and with all your heart. You don't lean in your own understanding. You, you submit to him. You, 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 you don't be wise in your own eyes. You fear the Lord. You shun evil. You honor the Lord with your wealth. Seven things that you can do in that a um, uh, couple of few little verses, and when you put those seven things into action, they are life changing. They are destiny changing. So when interruptions come, we need to look to the Lord. Interruptions will almost always, if not always, redirect our lives. They will redirect our lives, and this was true of Joseph and Mary. Their plans were interrupted, and but oh, what a, an interruption! Their lives were redirected forever. Not just time, but for eternity. Can you imagine a more wonderful privilege or a more challenging responsibility than to be the human parents, chosen to be the human parents of the Son of God, the Messiah, promised from before the foundation of the world, the direction of their future, took what, what they could never have planned. How in the world could they ever have planned for this? Have you ever considered that um, what God would take, um, what might seemingly look like an interruption, an unforeseen problem, and use it uh, on your life to take you on a new path? You ever thought about that? Um, one such divine uh, interruption was announced 700 years before it happened by the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. And this is what he said. He said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. See, I love this here. I, I, I love the little things in the Bible. Like it doesn't even say the government will be upon his shoulders. It's not even plural. It's singular. The government will be upon his shoulder. He can hoist up the governments of the world that we think are so powerful. He can hoist them up on one shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, that was a pretty unexpected announcement, wasn't it? One of uh, my wife Lorraine's favorite movies, trilogies, is um, The Lord of the Rings. Um, She's a true Lord of the Rings buff. I like it. I struggle to understand it a little bit, if I'm really, really honest. But it's great. They're great movies. Um, the first one is The Hobbit. And um, it's called, this, this is what it's called. It's called An Unexpected Journey. And uh, it was made in 2012. And it's followed by The Desolation of Smog, which was 2013. And then The Battle of the Five Armies, which is... 2014, and together they make up Jackson's Lord of the Rings film um, trilogy. Now, the story is set in Middle Earth, this much I do know, and 60 years before the events of Lord of the Rings, an unexpected journey tells the tales of Bilbo Baggins, who is convinced by the wizard Galdorf the Grey to accompany 13 dwarves led by Thorin Oakenshield. Um, on a quest to reclaim the lonely mountain from the dragon smog. Interesting story. Now, approaching his 111th birthday, the hobbit Bilbo Baggins begins writing down the full story of his adventure 60 years earlier for the benefit of his young nephew, Frodo. And here's the thing about this. Life, all of life's interruptions make life an unexpected journey. Life is an unexpected journey. I, I say sometimes I'm, 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 my birthday is on Tuesday, I'm coming, um, and uh, of the um, six decades plus two years that I've lived now, I've realized that life is full of the unexpected. Life is full of interruptions that, um, that come. And uh, if I sometimes say that if I were to write my book, of life, there's some of the chapters I would leave out. There's some of life's interruptions I would change, but you don't, you can't change them. You have to live through them and understand how to live life better. And for all of us, the interruptions that came in 2020 were totally unexpected. Who could have planned 2020? Imagine this time last year. None of us thought that for eight or nine months of the year we would be locked in our homes um, for a long time. 
um, that churches wouldn't be able to meet, that we wouldn't be able to go into shops, that we would have to queue outside stores, that we'd have to wear masks, that we would have to socially distance. It was quite on for saying who could have pre-planned 2020. Things that were desperately painful for some people. We lost some people of our own congregation that were great friends of mine for a lifetime um, through this horrible COVID-19. But can I tell you that 2,000 years ago, there was a non-expected Christmas. Best we can tell in the time of New Testament, it was difficult to survive infancy. However, if you, if you counted those who made it past childhood, the average life expectancy was around 40 to 50. Um, so lots of people alive today, including self, would be dead. And we don't know how old Matthew was when Jesus called him to be a disciple, but we can guess probably late teens to early 20s. And we don't know exactly when he wrote his account of the gospel that we have, but we figure it out that it was probably around 50 years after that. And so however you figure it, he has defied the odds and he's a pretty old man. And he doesn't have much time left for preaching and teaching, so he's decided, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to write it down because This story is too big. It's too important. Everything that has happened before Jesus' birth falls into the category of B.C., before Christ. Everything after is A.D. in the year of our Lord. History hinges on this moment. The Bible hinges on this moment. Old Testament, New Testament. Eternity hinges on this moment. It is by far the single most important event in human history. Came as an interruption to a young teenage girl and to a tradesman carpenter. But it was the greatest moment that this earth has ever seen. It was the greatest moment that eternity will ever remember by far. And who could ever have imagined that it would start in a little manger in an outhouse or a cave through people like Zechariah and Elizabeth, like Joseph and Mary, a little over 2,000 years ago, our God decided to drop in. He chose an unexpected place, a little village called Bethlehem. He chose unexpected parents, a teenage girl and a tradesman carpenter. He grew up in an unexpected town. I have a picture of it here. I took this picture um, uh, back uh, uh, when I was in uh, the Holy Land, and it was the most amazing moment. I think it was, it counts in the top 10 most surreal moments of my life when I stood in Megiddo and I looked over the plain of Jezreel where the battle of Armageddon would, would take place. And when you look at that picture, that little town up on the hill on the, taken from the valley or from the hill of Megiddo, that little town up on the left is Nazareth. That's Nazareth. That's where Jesus grew up overlooking the place, the Jezreel Valley, where the battle of Armageddon will happen. It ranks in one of the top most surreal moments in my entire life, seeing the place where Jesus grew up, overlooking where the end time would take place, surrounded by Mount Tabor, where Barak and Deborah led Israel against the mighty uh, Sisera, where, where the transfiguration may have happened, Mount Gilboa. You can see it all from Nazareth. You can see it all. Mount Gilboa, where Saul and Jonathan died. Mount Hermon, where the prophets of Baal battled uh, with Elijah. Even you can see from Nazareth, you can have a view of 17 or 18 miles away of the Sea of Galilee. You can see from what the Mediterranean Sea. It's a stunning choice, to say the least. And they say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God chose this little town for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to grow up and oversee all that has happened and all that's going to happen. I tell you, you couldn't write this story. You couldn't make it up. And so life lesson number five is this. The best thing you can do in life is expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. The wildness of this scene is almost incomprehensible. One bigger than the universe itself passing through the womb of a frightened teenager. One whose days are numberless, drawing his first breath 
as a human, one whose finger could rattle the heavens, flailing his arms uh, in the arms of a teenage girl, one who spoke the universe into existence with a word, babbling and cooing as a baby in the arms of a teenager. What an incredible scene. What a, a bewildered peasant teenager bearing what her friends and family considered an illegitimate child. And next week, we'll look at the Son of God, the turning point of history, the touchstone of your life, lying in a feeding truck. Who could have imagined it? Unexpected, to say the least. The absurdity of these scenes, absurdity of these scenes is only surpassed by how absurd um, it is of people refu you're refusing to bow their knee to such a Lord and such a God and such a Savior. What a, an extraordinary scene, so unexpected. A teenage girl, scandalously pregnant, convinced by an angel that it was God's plan. A scared young man, disgraced, um, but convinced by an angel that his pregnant fiance was still a virgin and that he would stand by her. Magi, pagan, astrologers, but God seekers drawn to a place by a star that somehow convinced that this child was incredibly a king. Shepherds, some of them the least respectable, some of them the seediest of society, and captured by the idea that God would call him to the birth of his son. All of this in some amazing scene. What an incredible story. How could you make it up? But as we look at this scene 2,000 years later, it's still a little bit deceptive, isn't it? Sometimes it's just a little too pretty, a little too clean, a little too mythical. It has a feel of a fairy tale, a fantasy. But it was none of that. So when you dust off the fantasy and you make it more real, you see the absolute power of God's plan from the beginning coming as interruptions into people's lives. God creates man. The devil tempts man to sin. Man sins. God declares in Genesis 3 that the serpent one day will bruise his son's heel, but he will crush his head. Jesus Christ. God's Son come in flesh, dwelling amongst us. John 1, 14, I love it. Made him flesh and dwelt among us, or as the message puts it, moved into the neighborhood. Jesus Christ come in flesh, becomes a perfect man so he could bear your sin and mine and Calvary and crush the head of the devil forever. And that's why Paul could write in Colossians 1, 27, he said, it's Christ in me. That is the hope of glory. What a story. What a story. And so out of redemption's perfect plan comes life's lesson number six. God chose an unexpected people. He chose you and he chose me. You know, I was lying in bed last night. I was thanking God for this. I was saying, God, I, 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 never was, I, I never was good at football. I played a little bit of rugby, but I, never, I could never play football. Um, and uh, when back in the day when you, they, they chose the teams in school, I was always that kid at, um, at, was at the last of the line. And you know the, you know the kid that when it comes to the last year, the only one standing on one team says, sure, you take him. And it's like, no, you take him. And... Um, and then somebody would say, well, he's a right big fella. Sure, he can do nets. At least he's stop a ball. Um, I want to tell you, see, not getting chosen for the football team? Uh, pretty insignificant now. God chose me before the foundation of the world. I said to God last night, you know, God, sometimes I don't think I would pick, I would pick myself, but you picked me. You chose me. And God chose you and unexpected people. Here's what he says um, through Peter in 1 Peter 2, 9. We'll finish with this. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. May this Christmas fill you with the unexpected joys of heaven. May the interruptions that have rocked your world in 2020 
May God turn them around. May you see them through God's eyes. May you see them with an eternal perspective. Me and my mum used to talk about this many, many times when dad suffered from Alzheimer's for many, many years, for the last, I suppose, 20 years of his life, and for 12 of those being quite bedridden. And um, we used to pray together. We used to pray that the Lord would take him home. And for years and years and years, we prayed, her and I prayed that prayer together, and and God didn't seem to answer that. And we used to question, and we would sit around mom's big table with her Bible sometimes, and we did this little study one time together, and I spoke about it in church, eternal versus temporal. And even when you look up the meaning of the words, like it's funny, like the word temporal is passing and and and. It just, it just everything about it's weak and watery. There's no substance to the word temporal. And we're living in a temporal world. And the problem is we feed into temporal things and we allow temporal things to feed our soul. And we pick temporal things all the time over the eternal. And when you look at the word eternal and you look at the meaning of the word internal, lasting, everlasting, enduring, and you look at all the meanings, the substance, they actually give strength to your bones. And we used to, mom and I used to talk about this, how uh, only eternity will unveil some of the answers to our prayers. Um, But when you start to look at life through an eternal lens, and when you start to look at life through eternal eyes, life starts to look differently. And for those of you who have lost loved ones this year, we grieve the loss with you. But you know, eternity is a long, long time. And life is short. No matter how many years we've left, life is short. And eternity is long. And when you look at it through an eternal lens and you realize that we're all going to live the lifetime of God, you know, things actually begin to change. And so expect the unexpected. When life's interruptions come, look at them through an eternal perspective perspective and see God in the midst of it. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've tuned in today to see what this place Emmanuel is all about, can I tell you that the greatest moment, the greatest moment that ever happened was the moment that Jesus Christ's feet touched planet earth. It says he came onto his own. That's the greatest moment. But you know, the greatest mistake is this. It says that he came onto his own, but his own did not receive him. The greatest moment, the greatest mistake can become the greatest miracle today because to as many as did receive him, to them gives he the power to become the sons and daughters of God, the greatest membership. Greatest moment, greatest mistake, greatest miracle, greatest membership. And it can be yours today. And so you say, Phil, how can that happen? Well, Simply by looking on to him. The Bible says looking on to him. All right? And all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So just pray in that simple prayer. saying, Lord, I repent of my sin. I want to turn my life around and I want to follow you for the rest of my life. I want to look not through temporal eyes anymore. I want to look at life's interruptions through the eternal. So God, would you come and save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit today. If you've prayed that prayer, would you let us know? Um, let us know through our website, info at emmanuel-church.co.uk or ring the number that will be on the screen. Please let us know, will you? So the Lord bless you. And again, I say, as I said a moment ago, may this Christmas be filled with the unexpected joys of heaven. The Lord bless you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast. For more information about our church and all that we do, please visit our website at emmanuel-church.co.uk.